Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. I've got my new friend Mike here and uh, Mike's agreed to sit down and tell us a little bit about um, his life and his experience. So Mike, you're originally from North Carolina? Actually, I'm originally from New Jersey. Oh, from New Jersey, yeah, okay. But I lived in North Carolina for about, about close to 30 years. I 30 say. years, wow. Yeah. And so New Jersey, you still have family back there? Yeah, yeah. I'm actually, yeah. all my family's in Jersey except for my immediate family, my sister, and my nephew, his wife, and two kids. They live in North Carolina. When's the last time you were back in New Jersey? New Jersey? Oh, God. Decades. Decades. Oh, yeah. So you don't plan on going back there at all? or? Uh, no. Hmm. Not really. No reason to. Hmm. How about America? When's the last time you were in America? Uh, I was there March of 2021. Okay. Now, do you go back regularly or... Uh, Are you no, planning well, to go back? When, when I left the States, yeah. uh, I went to Nicaragua for four months. Okay. And then um, that didn't work out, and I went back to the States for a month, and then I came here, and I've been here ever since, and I have no real plans ever to go back. Hmm. So you're happy with the Philippines? Yeah. And what was your career back home? So I was in IT for 30 years, hmm. uh, programmer, uh, programmer analyst, uh, support person, that kind well. of thing. Yeah. Now, are you doing anything now with computers at all? Or? No, no. no? Um, I was actually forced out of my career um, with all the insourcing and outsourcing that they do in America, and I couldn't find a job, and then COVID hit, and then I tried retail. Uh, corporate retail is not a place you want to be when you get older, and, uh, yeah. and I decided to retire. Well, good for you. Um, now, you've obviously, you know, if you're in IT, you obviously have computer skills that your average person doesn't have. Right. Um, and like I look at myself and like I'm just a guy that, you know, I know a little bit about, you know, using my, my computer, but I've been able to make a living, you know, several different ways just using my computer, you know, t tutoring English, now YouTube channel. And I met a lot of guys that have computer skills who um, are doing different things online, like, you know, websites, influencing, whatever. And so you never thought about like doing something online or... No, because my alternate career is I've, I've been in martial arts for almost 50 years. Yeah. And all I really want to do now is teach. Oh, really? So I don't need the money to survive. So I'd, I'd rather do that and help people improve themselves and that kind of thing. And, and that's my direction now. Mm -hmm. you, know? you watch UFC? Sometimes. Yeah. Um, I think that UFC is, you know, um, these guys think that they're the best at everything that they do. And, and, and that's not really true. There's no one system better than any other. Just depends on how good you are at what you do. That's what it comes down to. I've seen the guys on YouTube like uh, they do Muay Thai in Thailand. Right. A couple of those guys are amazing. They uh, they start really young and their their actual careers only last about three years because the sport is so brutal. Wow. Yeah. Hmm. Um. So you're here in the Philippines. Um, and did you have any trouble like getting into the country or when you came in or? No, when I got, when I came in, I had absolutely zero problems uh, mm. coming in. It was very uneventful. I, I flew from JFK uh, yeah. to Europe and then Europe over to uh, Cebu, and it was a very uneventful flight. Mm. And so, um, you lived in Nicaragua for a while, mm -hmm. and um, what didn't you like about that? Well, first you have a language barrier. Yeah. You know, everybody speaks Spanish there. And then the culture, I could tell just from the people there that they didn't like us being there. Mm. Um, it wasn't welcome and friendly like it is here. Um, it was a small town that I lived in. Um, there was no real possibility of doing anything, you know, exciting. Um, so really wasn't into, the, into that whole culture. Um, I will say their infrastructure was pretty good, though. Mm. And why did you go to Nicaragua, of all places? Uh, there's this online YouTuber named oh. uh, Dean okay. uh, Verano, and uh, who everybody knows through uh, Old Dog's channel. Yeah. Uh, hooked up with him, went down there. Uh, visited for a week, and then I decided, you know what, I don't have a life in the States now, so I might as well just go down there, because my original plan was to come here, but the Philippines was closed at the time. Mm -hmm. So I decided, well, let me go down there and try that and see what happens. Mm. And so, um, here in the Philippines, you've decided to spend the rest of your life here? I, uh, I really like the people, I really like the climate, um, the cost of living, of course, you can't beat it compared to yeah. America. Um, you know, the women are just they're open to relationships here, not like in the States, mm. um, you know, but don't think that it's a, you know, it's a paradise and it's easy, you know, to find the right one is still difficult. Yeah. 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 There are challenges here, you know, there's no yeah. doubt about it. And there's, 
you know, some people are used to the comforts of, you know, back in the States and the amenities that you have available there. And uh, a lot of things that you're used to having, you don't have here. And, um, right. But when you add up the pluses and minuses to me, I mean, it's like, it's definitely, you know, so much better here. There are minuses here, but it's, nothing is enough to make me go back to another. Yeah. And one thing that, um, I don't know how you feel about this, but for myself, is that I've just, i made so many friends here. Like, I've been talking about expats mostly, but, you know, when I was back in America, I lived in a neighborhood of uh, families, and I was a single guy living in a middle-class neighborhood, and so I didn't really get to socialize with anybody because they didn't really want to socialize with me because the single guy living by himself exactly. and their, their families. Whereas here, when I came here, I just started meeting guys left and right from all over the world, yep. you know, from different countries. And so I've got so many friends now, my age, which really does a lot for your, you know, not your self-esteem, but your well-being, you know, that you've got people you can talk to and you're not right. alone. Because so many guys I talk to back in America and Australia and Europe is they spend all their time alone. Yeah. You know. In the last five years of my life, I was working from, from home and I was very isolated, hmm. you know, because I taught out of my house. Yeah. So I was teaching martial arts in my garage. I worked from home, so I very rarely went out except to, you know, go get food and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so that's one thing good is the social life here. Um, so one, a couple of questions I've been asking all my, um, the new people I interview. What's the worst thing that's ever happened to you your whole life? Like, some of the worst thing that really was really difficult for you to get through? Probably my divorce, yeah. I would say. Um, I was young and foolish and idealistic about what love was all about, and I married a woman who was very emotionally messed up. Mm. So you had the uh, complexity of marriage along with someone who's not emotionally uh, all there, and you have a really big problem. We only married for one year, huh. but it was very emotionally draining on me. And what saved me? Martial arts. Hmm. What kind of martial arts do you do? So I started in Taekwondo. I got a black belt in that, and I hold a seventh degree black belt in Ishinru Karate. And over the years, I've done kickboxing, Muay Thai, Gracie Jiu Jitsu, Jiu Jitsu, Aikido. And now hmm. what I do is I combine it into my own system where it, the center is street self-defense. Wow, wow, interesting. I took martial arts too a little bit when I was like back in the 70s. The like, only place I could afford to take martial arts was at the YMCA in the black neighborhood. Right. And I was the only white kid going there. And the brown belt girls used to love beating me up. And we fought on a tile floor. And yeah. it was uh, Chinese Kempo Shoren Ru. And the uh, sensei, was this guy that was in some, uh, I can't remember which ones they were, but he was in some like B-rated kung fu movies, you know, the kind they made back in the 70s, right, the fight right. movies. The chop sake ones, they yeah. call them, yep. And he would, he would show up for class wearing platform shoes, a full-length fur coat, and he would fight like that. We'd have to fight him on a tile floor, you know, with a full mink coat and, you know, platform shoes. That's funny. <clears throat> and then I took judo, I'm six foot four, Judo's not a tall man's sport because you got to get your hip underneath the hip of the person yep. you're fighting. And uh, so I wasn't any good at that either. But anyway. Same thing with Gracie Jiu Jitsu. It's not a tall man's sport either. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, because there's a lot of uh, ins and outs of how you have to move your hips and get your feet underneath people. And when you're taller and got longer legs, it's not easy. Oh, I thought once you got somebody to the ground, everything was equal. No, not exactly. Not exactly, um, huh? The guy that trained me, um, he was a little bit taller than me, and he was very excellent, but that was after years and years of training. Mm. Well, it seems like now with the UFC and Bellator that those guys have to know everything. They have to know boxing, jiu-jitsu, wrestling, you know, karate, everything, you know, to They have to know how to fight successful. on the ground. They have to know how to grapple. Yeah. And it takes the, you know, the boxing game and changes it because when you add legs, that changes the whole dynamic of the fight. Hmm. Interesting. Um, and so, do you have any students here yet, or? I'm working on that. I'm actually working with um, uh, Incredible, which is a, like a gym here. Yeah. Um, the owner's son actually sold me my car. Oh. So he works for Toyota, and then uh, we're trying to set up a kickboxing class over there. Because hmm. uh, a lot of them want to do it for fitness. So I yeah. said, yeah, let's go ahead and get that started, and then maybe we can transition into the self-defense later on down the road. Well, yeah, that's great. Okay, the second question is, um, what's the best thing that ever happened to you your whole life? And a lot of people, if they have children, say, well, my daughter was born, my son was born. So aside from that, 
What's like the best thing that's ever happened martial to you? Like arts. martial arts. By far. I mean, it, it's shaped my 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 whole character and everything, and it's given me more than it's ever taken away from. When did you start start it? Thirteen. Thirteen. Wow. Yep. And and um, continuous training. So some people will put it down. Right? Yeah. I continuously train, and I'm I'm almost in my fiftieth year of training now. Wow. Yeah. Now you can't. I can't train like I used to. I'm old now, but you know. But I still get out there and I do things to keep myself tuned and that kind of thing. You know, he says the same thing as Joe Rogan. Yeah. He he was talks about how it changed his whole life. It gave him discipline, and he had, he went through some hard times too. But he said that martial arts is what kind of got him through everything, you know, and gave him discipline in life to go on and learn other things. Yeah. He got out of it because he was afraid of getting brain damage. Yeah. He saw people getting knocked out and what was what it was doing to them. He said, "I don't want that," and then he stopped. That's a really good question. Like, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of UFC, and um, there's some brutal knockouts there. I mean, it's got to be worse than boxing. It is because they use elbows and knees. Yeah. And uh, that's what happens to Muay Thai fighters. The most injuries they get are from the elbows and the knees because they do flying elbows, flying knees, things like that, and that's why the careers are so short. So, do you think, like, you know? UFC is relatively new sport. It started like what the '90s, I think it was. And so, do you think we're going to start seeing all these guys, you know, with some serious? Um, I think so. I think there's a lot of injuries in boxing that you never hear about, too. Yeah. You know, uh, look at Muhammad Ali, for example. Yeah. He, you know, he ended up getting the problems he had from boxing. <laughs> so. Yeah. I ran into him a couple of times. My brother uh, remodeled his house in uh, really? in Louisville, Kentucky. Huh. Yeah, that's that's true. I heard also that um, soccer is another sport where there's a lot of head injuries. So the, butting the ball, like doing that over and over again, can cause problems too. I would say probably more from uh, colliding and hitting the ground is probably what's doing it to them, not head butting the ball. Because mm. the ball is soft. Yeah. So I don't think that that's causing it. I think concussion happens when you hit the ground hard. Mm. Mm. Um, so. Um, Finding a place to live here, did you have any trouble finding the right place? Extremely. Really? Yeah. Well, I, when I first got to Dumaguete, because I lived in Cebu for a month first, when I first got to Dumaguete, I was living in a hotel. Mm -hmm. And I started looking uh, at apartments with help from people. Mm -hmm. uh, trying to find a real estate agent here is, when, yeah. when they call themselves agents, they're really not they're agents. They're not. Right. They're like middlemen. And, that, and the places that they were showing me, I would never live in. I mean, they were so substandard to, to our standard of yeah. living. Um, and then just by chance, I got a place that was brand new, just built, um, and I'm living over in the Common Hawk uh, Barangay, which is over there by Cebulan. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been living there now for about, about four months or so, give or take. And it, it hasn't been bad. Nice place. Anything new is always, is always good to get into. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it is very difficult to find apartments here. Very difficult. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like there's more houses than apartments, actually. Yeah, I didn't even look at any houses because the, the people that were taking me and showing me around, they didn't have any, any houses to show me. Actually, I saw one, but it was unfurnished, and I didn't have any furniture at the time. Yeah, you don't want, I, I wouldn't even look at those either. Cause the last thing I want to do is buy a bunch of furniture and be stuck with things that I had enough trouble getting rid of my stuff. But uh, in... Ironically, the place that I moved into was unfurnished, so I had to buy everything. Oh, no. Yeah. So I own everything in the house except for the stove and the beds. <laughs> so when you left North Carolina, did you have a bunch of stuff to get rid of? Yeah. I, uh, I had a house to sell and, and all its contents that accumulated over 20 years. 20 uh, years? Wow. In the same place. That's, yeah, you have a lot of stuff. And there. I did it all in two and a half months. No kidding. Got, I had to get, give away a lot of stuff. I did Not too. a lot of stuff, but I had to give away some stuff, and uh, I sold a lot of stuff. The house sold in four days. Because the housing market is so good at, at this point in time because the corporations are buying up all the houses because mm. they want to control the developments and that kind of thing. Mm. So I made a good profit off of that. I made a good profit off my car. And, uh, you know, right now I'm living off that money. So. Mm. Do you think you'll ever buy a property here? It depends on my situation. If I find someone and I, we get married or that kind of thing, the re you know, the reason to have a house, then I would do it because I can't really have the, the house without a, a yeah. Filipina. So well, right now, I mean, the, the, I hear those laws may be changing. Right. You know, we'll see. But uh, sure, I mean, I'm open to anything. Um, it just depends on where my life goes and what happens. Have you traveled around the Philippines uh, to other places besides Cebu and here? I've been to um, uh, Siquior. I've yeah. been to General Santos. Mm -hmm. Um, in Cebu, and that's pretty much it. Mm. Yeah, uh, for me, it's like 
The reason I ended up here is by watching YouTube videos about guys who had been all over the Philippines. Right. And they decided that this was the Goldilocks place to stay, you know. Yeah. And that's kind of like why I'm here too. Yeah. And then, of course, with COVID, we couldn't travel anyway. I, I, I did the big three, you and Old Dog and Geo. Those mm. are the three that I watched and uh, convinced me to come here. Mm. I'm glad it worked out. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and there's a lot. The only thing is, is about when they give you information about somewhere or someplace, it's probably true at the time. Yeah. But things change. Oh, yeah. So, for example, when I first got here, I stayed in Mackin Newtown in, in Cebu, which Geo raved about and Paul's Asian Adventure, they raved about it. It's not the same as it was when they were there. Mm. I can tell you that. And mm. It's too expensive to live there. Yeah. Well, I'm not an, an advice. People always ask me for advice about things. I'm not an advice channel. I'm an interview channel. Like, I interview guys, find out their story, but I'm not the guy to go to for finding apartments or health insurance or any of that stuff, right. you know, visas and mm -hmm. all that stuff. I don't, I'm not the guy. But yeah, it seems like, you know, you're one of those people that's kind of hit the ground running and everything's just working out for you. And there's, it's, it's interesting, like some people, I find, you know, I think your, your martial arts uh, background probably has something to do with it, but guys like you, guys that are uh, former military, they seem to like, they land here and they just figure things out really quickly. They they find a place to live, you know, they find transportation, they learn their way around, they make friends, and they settle in really quickly. And other guys, they're kind of timid, they just kind of sit there withdrawn to themselves and don't go out, and they're really not any happier here than they were in America, right. except for you find yourself spending doing less the money. same things you were doing in America, like, why am I doing that here when I could be in America doing the same thing? Exactly, so. yeah, exactly. But yes. here, here's the thing that uh, Bruce Lee said, and I find it applies here, um, seek your own truth, mm -hmm. absorb what is useful, discard what is useless, and add uniquely what is your own. Yeah, brilliant. And if you live by that, you'll get along well in the Philippines. Mm. And you have to have patience. Extreme patience. Yeah. Because it just, things don't happen like they do in America. No. You've got to wait for a lot of things. Yeah. And we're retired now, so we're not in a hurry, that's for sure. Yeah, I tell myself, sometimes when I'm driving different places, I find myself, somebody passed me, well, I gotta pass them back, you know, and you wanna, you know, get there, get around this truck, say, wait a minute, I don't need to get any place at a certain time, it doesn't matter when I get to Ground Zero, it doesn't matter when I get to the mall. Right. I'll get there when I get there, you know, so I just settle down and enjoy the ride. That's and why I they call it, they talk about Philippine time, right? Yeah. yeah, you know, you just like, chill out, you know, and it'll get there, and even when I'm, if you're trying to do something with immigration, it's too busy that day, come back another day, you yeah. know? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it's, um, I've learned that when you want things done, um, you know, you just have to be patient and wait for it. Yeah, we got to be patient. That's like this thing that I talked about trying to set this class up at Incredible. We've been doing this for almost three months now and it still hasn't come to fruition. So mm. that's how slow things go here. Mm. Well, you'll get it done. Well, anyway, thank you so much for your time. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you, you know, and uh, best pleasure. of luck. and. Uh, Hope to see you again. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for subscribing, and we'll see you next time.